what's up people welcome back to another episode of refuse to fail podcast where we let people from the world of sport tell their stories in their own words about what makes their journey so great and how we can watch along and get it going this is a really special episode for me here i'm joined by two mates from my time back at uni because they've been doing some incredible stuff i'm joined today by josh mcphee and john fraser they are two of the founding brains behind the great football team in edinburgh called mental mechanics football club boys how are you welcome to the show Hi, Sam. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, that's good. I like it when we get a group on because I think this is really symbolic of what you guys have been doing, which we're going to get into. But it's just boys sitting and having a chat. Night after work is a great example of this. But yeah, most importantly, how's life been for yourself so far? Just keeping well? Yeah, good, mate. Very busy at the moment. Busy football, work, just the usual. How about yourself? I mean, just surviving and thriving like yourselves, getting back from work, getting things organised, getting yeah. this done. John, how's life treating you? Yeah, well, um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on with the club at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it's taking a lot of time, but yeah, it's all, all good time and very enjoyable at the moment. Good, love that. And now, before this, this is one for our mates as well. Obviously, the boys that we know outside in the group chats can give us a bit of grief for this, but we start off with quick fires every single episode. This is just how we get to get a little bit about you guys and the listeners get to hear what you guys are like. So, for example, the one that we want to start off with, a nice easy one, is tea or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Love a simultaneous answer. We'll do, because I know how microphones work and this software yeah. can sometimes play off. We'll just, we'll just have a good rule of thumb. Like, Josh, you answer first and then yeah. John, you follow. Yeah, that's, that is saying, yeah, I was thinking so, they go that way. It's all right, because otherwise my poor listeners are going to have to listen to me go, sorry, John, what was that? <laughs> right, Josh, you cut out there. Right, so second one, night out or a night in, Josh? Night out. John? <laughs> night out. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> 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 Mate, don't even know if somebody tells me about like a good Yankee candle and like a good face mask. Yeah. <laughs> Send the message. Be a lot that... it, so. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Mate, I don't, I don't believe you. I rate him more. Like night, the the day after the night's out, it's becoming a lot less. Worth yeah, it true. Night. That's when you question everything, though. Because <laughs> yeah. when you see the bank balance after, you're like, "What? Well, I, I was irresponsible." <laughs> Right, let's cats or dogs. Which what's your go to? Dogs. Dogs. Love that. <laughs> right. On your on our many nights in when we're all being sensible, are we more likely to go for a movie or a Netflix series? Movie. Netflix series. I love it. A bit balanced there. I love that. <laughs> right. If we're more likely if we've got to play a game if we've got to get play sport in like extreme weather, do you want to play in the extreme heat or like torrential rain? Oh torrential rain. Uh, I'll go for the heat. <laughs> Really? Oh, no, oh. He's just saying the opposite of me now to be uh, difficult. <laughs> We're just covering all bases here. Really like, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like anything over like 18 degrees, I'm red raw after. Yeah. I look like the shirts. I'll be as pink as the shirts you've got. Mate, eight degrees, that would mean like <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're in the car. Are you more likely to listen to a playlist or the radio? Playlist. Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna C D, surely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Mate, you must have been loving the other night. Did you stay up for it? Oh, brilliant. Didn't stay up for it. Watch no, it back, I though. No. Uh, I think it's getting quite embarrassing for the actual sport. I think she's already, like, dwarfed the numbers by about I've seen that. Yeah, she's got more <laughs> viewers, yeah. Yeah, that must, be, that must be quite tough for them to take as the biggest sport in the world, and they've not even <laughs> named it right. Uh, a good one for the boys. Socks and sliders. Is it acceptable, yes or no? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Good. That's, that's just the uni mentality. I've turned up to tell me many times in socks and sliders. <laughs> Right, when you're trying to get something organised, are you the boys that just let the text in the group chat scroll, or do you the one that gets annoyed and just says, right, I'm just FaceTiming folk to just get it sorted? Um, take control, but probably still over text in the group chat. Yeah, as you can see by this, um, trying to get this organised, I'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, like, just tell me when to be there, and that's me. Yeah, exactly. But some, sometimes that's easier, though. Right? Like, if you've got three like three or four folk all trying to get it organised, and then like, it's just chaos at the end of it, so... You need that guy who's flexible, so I'll just, I'll just be there. Right, sweet or salted popcorn? Both. Oh, you're need one of those mix. anarchists that just like yeah, throws the need bottle. Yeah, need mix. Yeah, I'll be sweet. Yeah, I respect that. Salt, salt popcorn is just anarchy for me. Right, if we had to get rid of one of the social platforms tomorrow, are you getting rid of Twitter or Instagram? Ooh, Instagram, probably. Twitter for me. I see. I, it's a double edged sword for me because there's so like so many good memes on Twitter. But like, I use Twitter for news, but I'd say more than anything as well. Though. Here we are. Yeah, you didn't find, like anything people related though. You get it off Twitter, don't you? The intellect. <laughs> Scores. 
Josh is just the victim of propaganda. Like anything that's on the top of news, I just takes as gospel. <laughs> right, if we're you know, Wikipedia as well. What was that? That is on Wikipedia looking for the news as well. I'm editing pages as soon as I see it on Twitter and updating everything. <laughs> Mate, honestly, the amount of times I've gone on Wikipedia and it's like you try to get like an interesting story out of it if you're doing research for this, and you'll then look at the source, and halfway through you realize it's absolute shit. And you're like, oh, well, that's, that's that gone. <laughs> right. If you're uh, your favorite Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, I actually, I actually like neither. I've never seen either of them, not a single movie of either. Not a single movie either. Yeah. Harry Potter, man. Yeah. Uh, I'll no. be Star Wars, but <laughs> Harry Potter as well. <laughs> Don, you're gonna have to get some team bonding on just like just the Star Wars all just front to back, and then just like right, take a yeah, week exactly. Home. Take a week, just I like, create escape with just Star Wars on in the background. Like, if somebody <laughs> wants to watch it, they can watch it. Right, and then second last one. Do you guys have a favorite quote you choose to live by? No. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> No, no, I can tell. Uh, <laughs> Sailor V. <yeah. laughs> okay, copy DM, actually. We'll go copy DM. Copy DM. <laughs> Some things just never change. <laughs> and then last one, what's the go-to fast food takeaway? Ooh, probably Nando's. Is that even fast food? I say it's fast food. Is it kind of fast food? No. Nah, I don't know. Uh, McDonald's then, probably. India for me. Is that fast food? That's not fast food. Is it? Uh, yeah, India takes that's... ages. Nah, that's like, oh, well, that's that's like, take away fast food, no? Nah. You nah, cannot you're not giving answers. You're not giving answers. What's your favourite go to chain restaurant that's <laughs> particularly speedy? <laughs> <laughs> Still Indian. <laughs> I've seen the fact that you've got a drive through Indian. I've seen that on uh, during the week, actually. Yeah. Oh, where's that? I don't can't remember where it was, but it's a, a new place. I think it was in England. England somewhere, yeah. yeah. Well, Mid- like Midlands, that. I think. So that's I don't know like what you do, you sit in your car and just grind it afterwards. Like, yeah, I was going to say, like, surely if there's a food that's not really designed for your car, it's probably an Indian. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's what they were like, do you remember that time, like, they just opened that random, like, Taco Bell, like, halfway up Scotland, and there was, like, no rhyme or reason <laughs> behind it. <laughs> and you had people, like, driving for hours just to go to try Taco Bell, like, come on. That's definitely low on the list of first for fast food, I'd say. I was going to say, I, don't, I think terrible. everybody I've known that's had it is ill after it. Yeah, it's terrible, like, really bad. Like, oh, there you go, you didn't, you didn't do anything too bad. In terms of the quick fires, I think the group chat will be quite safe after this. Nobody had any yeah, yeah, anus yeah. answers. They don't know John, how they feel about the, the Star Wars though. night. John, <laughs> John thinking diplomatically, John. Yeah, like, right, I got go, man. Fair play. So I've got to start you off. Thank you guys so much for coming on. As I said, the whole reason you guys are on today is for mental mechanics and to sort of allow me to help you spread the word about the great work you've been doing at the club. So founded in 2020, I'm right in believing, wasn't it? That was when the first season really started, but when did the idea and the story behind mental mechanics sort of come into play? You might as well take that one, John, because it was sort of John and Finn that um, yeah. started off and I joined in from there. So I think um, right at the start of like kind of the journey, me and Finn lived together and we were always like, we lived right next to Harrison Park in Edinburgh. So we were always like, oh, it'd be such a good thing to get like a, a football team together of all, all our pals and kind of like kind of get like everyone involved in because we kind of were all together and then we've kind of went, went our separate ways. So the, the idea was always there to have a football team. And then obviously with what happened, um, it's kind of the idea of metal mechanics to kind of get everyone together, kind of, increased in speed and that's where the the idea came from amazing so the story behind that how did you how did you sort of then get the ball rolling was it really an idea for you like did you reach out to a few of the the mates going around where you like or did the the unfortunate situation that did happen did that really bring the boys together and that sort of sparked the idea or how did that go um i think it we just we just went for it as soon as as soon as um we had the idea like well we're going to create a, a mental health football team um it was just a case of like speaking to the league but i think we always knew that we had the the court um the kind of core friends that were going to be involved and it was a case of like we'll just get up and running and then people will kind of follow and it kind of is what's just happened so yeah uh, quite quite an easy situation really i think yes. the uni part helped more getting that core group together as well obviously like yeah. yourself your napier like you just know like so that formed our most of most of our first team i'd say that you're just sort of reaching out to people you went to uni with that you know played football asking they want to get involved and it sort of helped it grow because before it was sort of like a forest thing that were down in edinburgh and it sort of grew through like napier and then people from there as well as you came and joined in once they heard about us 
That sounds, it sounds amazing. And it's like you had, like you said there, Josh, you had such a good platform to really get it. But obviously that doesn't just happen. You guys had to put a lot of work in behind it. And then did you find getting the team up and running sort of tough going or was, was it quite yeah. easy? Was there like a lot of people supporting the cause? Supporting the cause really was like that was a massive factor. We had so much support, especially back home. Like the like as soon as we started fundraising, um, straight away, like it was so much quicker than we expected to get to like the total we were looking for. But it was more, I think, the finding the players part that was the the hard part. Like the off the field football stuff was actually fairly straightforward. We were quite good at that from the start. But actually getting a core team that was going to be there week in week out was definitely the most challenging thing. I, I, I think it's great what you've actually done so far. And then how. How did you decide the sort of goal for the Metal Mechanics team when you started going? Was it was the ever idea, like you said, you, you thought it was a cool idea to always run your football team? I know a lot of us, like massive football manager player myself, everybody looks at every football team they've ever supported and thinks, give me give me 300k, a good budget, and show me three scouts in the lower league, I'll get you a good team sorted. But like, how was it for yourselves when you really decided to set the goals for the team? How did that come about? When did you have that sit down topic? for what you wanted the team to be? Well, I think from when we first started to where we are now is like kind of two different, like night and day almost. Like right <clears throat> where we are now, we, we're we always got too many players for a Saturday usually and we're having to like kind of cut the squad down um, and like look at like training stuff. But where we were before, it was it was quite a hard, hard situation. We are like, thought we had enough boys but it was a case of like trying to drag a lot of people along with us and we went through a lot of rough to kind of get where we are now i don't know if josh wants to expand on that yeah like i mean even like first season a lot of time you'd be 11 players on the dot or even like getting trialists like phoning around players saturday morning or friday night saturday morning just to get them to play even at the forefoot one of the games in our first season um just we didn't have enough boys mm -hmm. and then that was one thing we sort of said it was this like this year was all about finding a, a core group that would be there week in, week out. We couldn't keep spending our, our Saturday mornings chasing around getting a team. And then especially because that was affecting results, but it's also affecting the whole sort of ethos of the club. It's not about people being there together if no one's there. So it was yeah. important this year finding an actual core group that was gonna show in show up for each other week after week. I love it. So how was um how was that first season for you guys? And then how actually before we talk about the first season as a whole, the very first game when you finally got you got the shirts, you got the team on the pitch. How was that emotionally for yourself, John, probably, as it was sort of your, as one of, we'll call you the founding fathers of mental mechanics. Like, how was that, how was that emotionally um, for you on that first game? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was quite a, uh, um, it was an emotional day, but like, I think it was a culmination of like events that we've been building up for because we obviously started before kind of COVID started and we had the idea for a year then it was kind of put on the back burner for a year. And like we had been waiting for this moment for a while. And I think the first game was, I think it was Bonus United or something away. And I think we were four or five nil down within the first 15 minutes. Like these guys, like we thought it was going to be like, we played football quite a lot and we thought we were quite good. But these guys were at a completely different level to what we were expecting to be playing against. I think they scored about 330 yarders within the first 10 minutes. And we were like, what, what are we meant to do against this? So, um, I'm limitations for about 20 minutes. <laughs> it was, a, it was a, 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 a big shock to what standard we were actually playing at. But, like, I, again, it was, I think we knew it was never going to be, well, I don't think we knew it was never going to be easy, but it, it was, it shows you how difficult it was going to be. But it, we, it, we've progressed a lot. And then, like, how was it, like, I want to I want to know how it sort of felt for you when you were like you're in the team lineup and you're just sort of looking uh -huh. down because obviously you played like like you said you played a lot with the boys from uni and you had the forest lads that really helped commit to yeah. the cause like how like how was the pride when you sort of just looked up and down the line and you're like this is something we've done and we've done it for such a noble reason yeah uh, well probably not on the day I, I didn't really think of it as as kind of profoundly as that but I think looking back on it a, a couple of days later and whatnot I think it, it showed just how far we'd come in such a short short space of time like we we have put a lot of work into it and i, I think it does it does reflect well on how how much like kind of awareness we're raising for like different causes within mental health um so yeah it is it is a, a big achievement what we've done and, and looking back on it, i think I probably should have maybe indulged in in the moment a bit more but like it's more of a, a hindsight thing to show where we where we're at and where we are now 
it's so quick though as well like you don't sort of have the time when you like when it was all getting set up to like sort of think back and think about what you're like doing and i sort of appreciate what you're doing because everything was like 100 miles per hour everything you got to organize because like, i don't know about john but it was the first thing sort of that i've really got involved in the organization of that severely anyway and mm -hmm. realizing exactly just how much time that you have to spend of your free time doing it as well was a bit of a shock i didn't expect it to be especially so like admin heavy and things like that but like honestly at first season especially because none of us knew what we were doing you would spend hours doing it sometimes mm -hmm. I, was gonna, I was gonna say because it is it is like a full-time job you are running a football club at the end of the day like it's not it's not like a Salford or a, a Wrexham that gets the publicity you still are you still are running a full football club and like you say it's it's a bunch of boys that are sat in a group chat that are just trying to make a difference so how was yeah. it how was it when you got in that league because you like you guys play credit teams like you come down and play you play the Hotspur at Linton that are nearby you've came and down I don't think you've played. Have you played in Elithan yet, or have people the Tweedale Rovers yet? No, no, no. never. Uh, in Elithan, actually, they, we got offered a friendly against one of them in summer, but we had uh, had a friendly day. It was booked, so we couldn't get in. But I think because obviously we we know a few boys from up that way anyway. Yeah. It's probably someone who to try and get a friendly. In. Oh, I mean, that'd be class because like, you do play. So when you got accepted into these leagues, like, did you find there was not a lot of hurdles you had to jump through? Because obviously nobody wants to say you guys can't play, but I, I imagine there is a lot of things like you said with the admin and stuff. Did you find that such a difficult task to get the team sort of correlated for that? It's it was sort of just like getting in the league's not difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to register, you pay the fees and you just fill in the forms. It's fine, but it's the more like I guess just not having the experience of doing it before. Like mm -hmm. you have to do it again each year. You have to re-register re each year. Um, so like this year is a, a breeze compared to to last year. But I think now because this year we sort of designated who's doing what in the committee. Um, sort of got a bit more organised in that front because we knew sort of we had the experience of being able to do that this time, knew what jobs people would have to do. Whereas last year it was sort of just a bit scattered, like, oh, can this person do that? Can this person do that? Just as and when it came. Yeah. Like now it's like you just sort of know what you're doing, you know what you need to do for <laughs> for the club essentially. Yeah, um, so I think like the registering of players and stuff like that, like we, oh, we were all <laughs> like on a Friday before the game being like, oh, so and so is going to play. And if you're not signed for like a cup game, you've got to, you've got like properly like, sign them and then whatnot. So we were always rushing around to, like last minute trying to get these things done. But this year we're so much more like on a level where we understand what's happening. Having the core group helps, I guess, though, because now it's yeah. we don't have to scramble for the signatures because we, we know the boys we've got signed from summer will be there. So you can rely on them straight away. So it's not the case of a, a Saturday morning someone's pulled out, oh, that's us down to 11 boys. Why are we playing with 11 or do you have to go and find someone? It's not mm. really an issue this year. That's good. Like, that shows the commitment as well. Because like you say, it's like it's all good idea when people spark in a group. Like, oh, yeah, I'd play every weekend. And then by the time you're like fifth weekend, then you think, oh, I've got so many plans I didn't know I actually had. <laughs> this seems to take place at three o'clock on a Saturday. <laughs> I think I'm probably the worst for that, to be honest. I don't think I, <laughs> I'll never be there anymore. <laughs> I mean, you're doing all the admin stuff behind them. Exactly, yeah, it's right. behind the scenes. It's making it tick over. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. You're, dra you're dragging the boys out on Valentine's Day to come and record a podcast. That's, exactly, that's, brave, yeah. that's braver than playing for it. <laughs> I'll be in Hannah's bad books for sure anyway, John. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> at, least, at least John John was doing it for the cause. The, the, other, the other player that came in, one of the boys we knew, he was like, no, nah, I'm not brave enough, lads. I've got to I'm <laughs> Just name him. Him. I'm I'm not, name him. I'm going to name him. No, because I'm scared of his missus. <laughs> I'll say it. Todd Rafferty. Yeah, she knows stories about me, so she could end my she could end my career tomorrow. <laughs> so she's a forest girl too. She won't she wouldn't do that to us. Exactly. She loves the cans. She loves the cans. She's fine. Love you, Rachel. Please don't please don't grasp us up. We're fine. We're good people. Uh, yeah, so talk about the the incredible stuff you do on the pitch and the incredible stuff you do getting the boys together is it's not even half the incredible stuff you guys do. So outside of footy what do the cans do? Like, how often are you doing more stuff? I know you do a lot of fundraising for yourselves, but you also do a lot of raising money for charities. So, can you talk us like some of the the big foundations and drives you've done since you've been a club? Um, most recent one was a sponsored walk. That was more for us, to be honest. Um, like that was what was it be done twenty twenty miles or twenty kilometers? I can't remember. Uh, twenty kilometers. Yeah, twenty <laughs> kilometers. Definitely not twenty miles, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, twenty kilometers going to Edinburgh. Um, again, like. I think you think it's going to be over a lot quicker than it is, but like compared to some of the fundraisers we've done before, that was more of the probably more tamer ones, I guess, because before it's sort of like we had the forest trip, whereas that was something in it for everyone. You had the game up in forest, raising money for um, various charities. Mikey's Line up north, which is a mental health based charity, and um, mm -hmm. supporting Mind, that was who we used to be partnered with here, and then fundraising for ourselves. Um, and then we used to be done a, what was it, 100 streets of Edinburgh. 
Was that a different one last year? Yes, that was just yeah. like, you just you just go around walking on the hundred streets in Edinburgh, any route you want. And that was raising money directly for support in mind. That was their chosen fundraiser. And um, we're looking to do another one soon. We'll probably go back up to Forest for it again. I think probably around May time. Right, well, definitely let us know when we can get anything involved with that. Because I've got me and the other guests. We all have had it on. We've got a lot of guys that deal with mental health and stuff like that. I think looking at the thing, who will be who will be on by there? Yeah, we have. We've had Tully Kearney's episode will be out by then. So they've seen that she's obviously Paralympic swimming champion, like three times world champion, breaks her own world records for fun. And she's done a lot with mental health as well as all her disability charities that she works with. So mm. yeah, give us a note when that's going on. We'll happily get stuff involved. And then That'd be great, listeners, yeah. listeners, when you're watching as well, case in point of what these guys do here, if you're giving money towards like the cans, it goes somewhere useful. It's not just a case of it's going towards fund its own thing. It's going to... It's Cam you're, Cam you're responsible now, isn't it? Is that um, Cam, we're still like slightly linked to Cam. That's the thing. We've actually just we're in the process of changing charity, oh, um, isn't it? who we're who we're partnered to. I can't. I don't know. I think it's Health in Mind. Is it? Yeah, it's Health in Mind. Health in eh? Mind. Yeah. So I think that's going to be the charity we're going with next. So oh, I think isn't? that will be. I don't think we'll try and we'll we'll stay partnered to one charity through. I think obviously we'll try and help various out throughout our time. As as you should, it's help, it helps everybody, and then there's no there's no bad way to help people. Help exactly. people is helping yeah. people. So, like you said, if you guys if you guys are doing so well, bringing in all this money, it's good that you share it around, because it like everybody has their own different targets. Like everybody's working towards the greater good. Everybody has exactly. different ways of doing it. So, because yeah. otherwise, everybody would just do the one the one charity event, like we just do, for example, on a Red Nose Day or something that you pick on. We just go from there. But we have all these other ones because exactly, yeah, they all yeah. get the public. Like the, the big ones always get the publicity as it is, so they're yeah. raising money in a much easier way. So if you can spread the word about numerous charities, then obviously you're helping way more people. Exactly, exactly that we could go. And yeah, I want to be involved. So give me a shout when it's getting on. Anything I can do to help, we will. Even if I can get other guests to do stuff for a raffle or stuff like this, for example. I know John Needham. John Needham's massive mental health advocate. He'd probably get us some sitting in strips. Probably, that'd be good. I know the I know the guys. Don't know they'll be the... sought after, will they? But... What's that? <laughs> Don't know they'll be that sought after. <laughs> I'm saying John. I'm saying nothing. Stop me. And... If you Josh's one, maybe you might be fine. But... <laughs> Josh's views do not represent the podcast. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> There's only one team in Glasgow, and they play in Paisley. That's it. <laughs> uh, so I should say that. So how does the boy? Like you said you've had a really good core group of players, which I think is is a great example of how a group of guys can make a difference. Because you've obviously brought more guys in that now feel like the core group of boys from the ones you had. So do you guys make a conscious effort as as the cans to do a lot of like extra cricket? Like for example, we used to have a thing at rugby, not at Napier rugby, but when we did teams we had like coffee club and stuff like that. That was like Sunday morning coffees were always an option if people wanted it and you just put a location in. Like do you guys do conscious objectives like that to have like sort of thick like it's outside of football team activity? Yeah, well, so when we first started, like, uh, during, like, kind of COVID times and that, we we always done, like, a kind of drop-in session. So mm -hmm. it was kind of designed to get people speaking because, obviously, we didn't really know each other and we didn't know where we come, we, we all came from and why we were here. So we'd get, like, a, a kind of coordinator from, like, a, one of the charities to kind of lead the session and maybe just, like, talk about experiences they've had with mental health and just to kind of make it show to everyone else that it's kind of normal and, like, everyone kind of suffer from mental health challenges and whatnot. And then if like someone in the club wanted to speak out about it, they, they'd be more than welcome to speak out about it if they felt comfortable. So yeah, stuff like that would do like after games are always like kind of, we've got a kind of pub right across the road from the pitch. So we go in there for food afterwards, food and drink, and then kind of just chat about the game. And then if we're going out later on at night and then we still do like extra like kind of team nights out and that. And uh, we've just kind of got a kind of mental health coordinator. So he's there to, kind of organising the activities that are more dedicated to like the mental health side of things because obviously we're there for mental health. Football is the main kind of influence to help you with your mental health issues but we're also kind of behind the scenes if you need any like kind of counselling or whatnot we kind of signpost you to, to all these areas. I love it. I think that's great. I think that's such a it's something more clubs should have is I think the first impression I got from yeah. that is that's something more clubs because like most clubs have a physio most clubs have a coach. Most clubs, I think that is probably up there with top, especially as you go higher up in the ranks as well, as you get to like yeah, yeah. well being officer. Yeah. Is, is, was... There's something, that's what we spoke about, because um, we had an article in the Times not long ago. I don't actually know if this bit got published, to be fair. Um, <laughs> but she was asking us sort of what we think professional clubs should do more of. 
I think that was our sort of common thought was just someone that's there as a direct person for you to actually talk to. Like they obviously have people that help them talk in the media, things like this, but you don't actually like how many people are in there or they talk about after the struggles they had with the mental health during when they played football or any sport. Why is there not someone that's like a direct link for them to deal with that rather than just telling them what to say in the media? Yeah, like a sort of a post a post sport sort of yeah. Men, like you say, like a well being officer, but also somebody that sort of helps them transition out. Is yeah, as sure. difficult as this to transition in, it's almost difficult to transition out. Yeah, because sure. I mean, we've spoke to we've I don't know about you, so I've had a pleasure of meeting a lot of people through this, and I knew a few guys before. I had one very recently called George Taylor. He recently transitioned out of rugby because he had too many concussions, so he was out for that reason, had to retire due to injury. So I've not had the chance to speak to him and see how he's getting on that, and I'm not. Don't want to share his story without his words, but obviously, like you can imagine how it is going from such a regimented lifestyle to then go into oh you're back on your own, like what most what most kids find where you just get thrown out into the world after you finish the yeah. education. So I mean, people retire when they're even at retirement age, sixty seven, they're just adjusting to to like yeah. not doing anything. Imagine you're doing that at like thirty, forty, and you've got that for the next like forty years of your life. You'd be lost, yeah. especially after doing something every day. Like it would exactly. be a struggle for anyone. Exactly, and try to play catch up as well because it's not like you're at the same pace as everybody you know around you because they yeah. either still be in that world that you've just come from or your mates externally will not have that situation. Like, they will just, it'll be part and parcel for them now. Like, they will be just used to it. Exactly. Uh, so, I like to talk about football because I think football is a great game as well. I personally prefer football more as a fan than a player, and that's because I'm absolute dog water at football. But the the Mental Mechanics FC journey. Can I expect a Darvel Cup run in the future? Is that on the cards? Is that an aim? <laughs> We're on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> if the Logan Cup counts, then yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. How, where do I where do I get pink flares? Because I'm keen for it. Oh, anywhere. <laughs> just internet a, a great place. <laughs> <laughs> so how does how does it go? Like, do you have this now? Like, I think a great example as you said there. You like season season one compared to where you are present day in that. It's a different thing. So, if you, as your attitude has to shift with the team as well, like as you get more, I don't want to say more serious into the football, but I suppose that's kind of as more people expect more stuff from you is probably a fair, fair thing to say. How has that changed for yourselves now? Honestly, I don't, I don't think that's the part that's probably changed. I don't think. I think oh. I would say for the expectation of us is, as a club anyway, I'd say has remained the same. Mm-hmm. Performance-wise, obviously, we like it's changed the football. We now expect. Like last week, I think we were showing up. I mean, I kind of thought we were like the whipping boys last year. I think we sort of all accepted it. Mm-hmm. But still, we we, ended, we we got a few wins, but obviously they they felt brilliant last year because we were so far and few between. Was this you know we ex- I wouldn't say we expect to win, but we'd expect to compete with any team we're playing just now. That's good. So, how is it? How is it for you, John, as well? Just getting just getting that change coming into the club. Yeah, like I think last season, as Josh said, we were like known as the whipping boys, and we would kind of ship a lot of goals. Um, and I think we we did. Me and Josh kind of sat down at the start of the season when we kind of took over this year, and thought like, obviously, like that that's taken a, a toll on a lot of the boys, like mental health, like in 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 a sort of way, like you don't want to come to football because it's going to make you feel, not make you feel worse, but like there's going to be detrimental impact. So we were like, what can we do? So we, we got a manager in and we'd done like some scouting for a manager and just try to like get a bit more like kind of competitive in within our team. Um, and I think it's done like, we've only done a couple of things like introduced training once a week and got a manager and we've seen exponential like changes in our like form and that's had a lot of impact on people wanting to come back like as Josh said we we're struggling to get 11 boys some week but now we're kind of at the 19 20 mark and I think that is because we're winning and competing a lot more and people want to come back rather than being like oh it's another five six nil on the hands like why am I going to turn up to that and it, it changes your mindset and I think it makes people feel a lot better about the football we're playing and why we're there yeah, mm-hmm. training's definitely been the big one, I'd say, for me, especially even just in terms of the club atmosphere. Like last yeah. year, not having it, we play fives now and then, which obviously helped people become familiar with one another, become friends. But having that actual, the training sessions made, especially with quite a lot of new players in, just gelled everyone as a team so quickly. And obviously, that helps the mental health atmosphere in the club too, because straight away you're trusting these people, you can talk to them. Like the, the chats you have on the training ground with people is just like your, your day to day life. So that's definitely yeah, helped, not just performance-wise, but just as a club as a whole. So I think it's, that's one thing I think we should have probably done from the off last year, looking back on it. Because we were all about communication, and I think 
training training isn't just about playing football. It's about being around someone that you would like. Sometimes on a Saturday, you turn up for ninety minutes, get changed with them, and then leave, and then you never see them again for the next like two weeks. So mm-hmm. the training is just a time for people to speak to each other and get to know each other and understand like a little bit more about each other. And I think that's helped so much with the team because we've got 20 people at training every week and then that transpires into the game. So it's so much better for us. And like you, like you said as well, getting 20 boys, it makes such a difference as well because when you've got, if you have that same 11 core boys, you don't, not you don't have hope for something. But, so I come from a team at rugby where we were, we were very much the same as you. We were a, It was an old club that was sort of falling down and there was the same sort of six, seven, really trying to keep it afloat. But eventually, like you say, you're, you're turning up with seven boys, you're getting you're getting like thrown about at the weekend and you're like, this isn't great because as fun as rugby is or as fun as sport is, when you win, it's more fun. That's just the way mm-hmm. sport is. So when you get those 20 boys together, I think I'm actually going to bring this question in now. Is, is it just the case where obviously you have to register players in that, but like, how do people, if they want to come and either play for the cans or support the cans, how do they how do they get involved with the club? Um, obviously, because we're quite active on social media, as so we've got your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We've got a website, which I mean hasn't been updated. I don't think since maybe October twenty twenty. Maybe if you're lucky, um, but like that's got a direct link that you can fill out a player form to inquire to play for us. So we still pick up the emails from that. So then, mm-hmm. But then, yeah, so just contact us via social media. And then anyone that asks to play will be allowed to come down to training. Like, training is the one thing we've always said. You can obviously only sign 30 players for the club, but training will remain open to whoever wants to come. Like, anyone, any level, if you want to play football, you should be allowed to play football. So training will always be open to anyone. Yeah, 100%. We're, we're an open book in that terms. Like, I think, as Josh has, like, we're not going to say no to anyone, no matter what your level. We've got, like, boys that come down who know they're not going to get in the team but just want to come down and train and it's fine enough we're we're happy to have people down there just to to kind of get you amongst other people and like you might be suffering from mental health and you might not want to tell someone and us letting you come to train and and speak to a few other people might just help you along the way so as i say we're never going to be like no you can't come to train i love it that's great and then what i think would be i think is the future for you guys is definitely the the expansion because like you say as you keep getting these more boys as the word keeps growing because you guys like you said you're getting you're getting write-ups in the times and things like that or you're at least getting attention from the times if like you say if these things don't get published then when they did or they're getting published and like that you're still getting this attention so the word's growing and obviously like you guys are actually quite well known around edinburgh now that like, you've got a good cult following going up i'm a proud supporter of the page like you said social media i think i've got them all um do you do you have plans for the expansion like are you looking to try get like, do you have sort of like, I hate the term five-year goals because they get a bit cringy and it turns into like some sort of Instagram. It turns into a Pinterest board before you're not careful. But are you guys sort of looking at the expansion? Because I think what would be really good for you guys is like a fives team or something like that. It's like if you say for these guys that are just like, I'm going to play football because it's a bit of a laugh. I know I'm I'm not in control of my own legs. It looks like when I'm playing, but we can just get the boys, like get them five shirts and just send them off to that place down the back of Site Hill, not sponsored. Yeah. On the <laughs> no, no free clout, uh, not supposed to be on a Wednesday because I like that. Hey, so sorry to interrupt the podcast. This is something I wanted to tell you about, and it's something I wanted to explain before I just go around throwing it everywhere because this is something that was quite difficult for me to decide to do. It took a lot of deliberation and a lot of discussion with friends and family. I have now created an option where you can tip the podcast or you can reward the podcast if you feel the podcast deserves it. There is an option down below where I found, I went on the internet, I found this website that wants to reward content. That was our go-to for a Why Not Wednesday, just do that to get, mm-hmm. get, the, get the sweat out and feel a bit more confident on Sagala shapes on the dance floor. <laughs> Justify going out. <laughs> yes, yeah, like it's a, a long-winded say, say, what's the expansion plans for mechanics? Like, What's the what's the growth looking like? Honestly, so we, had, we had this chat uh, <laughs> last year. I think our goals then are very different to what they were now. I mean, this time last year, we were talking about getting a team bus. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was in our discussion of the goals. But like, obviously, right again, from that was very early on into the season. I think that we've already seen there's no, we do not need a team bus. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of expansion, I, I don't think it's something we've ever really thought about um i don't know i think it's just something you've got to take as it comes Mm -hmm. like getting up the ranks in the amateurs is probably our one aim i'd say but also i think the aim is also just the overall aim of the club will always be creating that environment where anyone feels comfortable to talk to anyone about anything so like the football will always be secondary aims to us essentially as long as that in the environment that club remains so yeah we have we have a five-year goal 
I don't know I don't know if we have a five year goal, but like mm-hmm. rising up the amateurs I'd say would be our performance goal. But like as long as we're if that doesn't happen and we are still successfully done what we aim to do of creating that environment, then I think we'll always consider this a success. Yeah, I think the 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 second team, as it were, even if you're talking about fives, it is it's an idea for for us to move forward. But like I say, we don't have the the actual numbers if we were going to do that. But like moving forward, it's something that we can we do like have the the level of commitment from boys. I think it's something that we could easy kind of look into. But at the moment, I think one team's more than enough for me to book, <laughs> book uh, yeah. and pitch and like, all that for. Like, I don't think I'd I think I'd uh, be disowned if I, I had to take any more responsibility. But <laughs> we'd have to fundraise probably every week. The cost the cost of booking football pitches nowadays. The twenty k walk just becomes just becomes a second training session. Of the week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We'll have to get you've got some you've got some good stash there. I feel like there's opportunity for a refuse to fail logo on the shoulder there. So there could be so we're right. actually gonna have these for sale. That's the main reason I'm wearing it just now. I love that. <laughs> we're gonna cool. have these and um and some of the home tops for sale just to raise some money as well. So uh, they'll be getting plugged soon. Class. Well you've got you've got one less now because I'm officially putting a pre order yeah. in for mine. So. Right on that wall <laughs> behind you. Mate, I'd say I'd say the neck. I was um I was at work the other or I was working from home the other week and I had I had a New England Free Jacks rugby top on. I completely forgot I had a call. So last minute I fired on just like a sweater because it luckily had a collar on it. So everybody thought I was wearing a shirt with a collar on it. Yeah, so I was just wearing a rugby top underneath. <laughs> so there you go. Excuse to wear it from home. Sophisticated. Sophisticated cues up. So always go do very well. So I want to talk to you both about, we've spoke a lot about mechanics and your your relationship with the club and your your influence on the club. Your Yourselves, your own sporting backgrounds. For you both, has it always been football, or was there a case of other sports that led you towards football, or has it always just been football? Right? I've only, I would say, the only sport I've ever actually seriously played is football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I football, football and golf. Um, I'm probably more playing golf these days as I can stay fit for more than one training session. I think I've played about one game in the last two years, so yeah, probably golf's my other, my other sport at the moment. I have to think me, me and John don't play now really. <laughs> we we've created a, we've created a core group that involves us now not playing football. <laughs> the, the dream, that's it. Well, not the dream, but like, it's like a lot less commitment on a Saturday. But <laughs> we're the best thing. So our, our manager has temporarily left just now. Um, mm-hmm. she's just a little a little girl. Um, so me and John are now taking over the running of the team as alongside two of the other boys who take training. Um, so again, like even if we're not playing, we're just, we're down there now managing the team on a Saturday. So at least keeps us. Keeps us involved in the football side of things as well. That's class. I can't wait to come along. Next time you have a home game and I'm not doing comms, I'll definitely come along because I think well, there's not there's really not an excuse for me to the fact I've not been to a game yet. But this is me <laughs> sort of putting on camera. It's really not acceptable. I've not been to a game yet. So. Mate, many many haven't. We were expecting yeah. to see a lot more people down soon. I'll tell you. So this podcast this will come out around the 15th of March if all goes well with my schedule that I've got on a piece of paper. And, in a very professional atmosphere next to me, but um, we will have a look for as this goes. But as we'll do it, we'll try to get a big sort of like one of the higher profile games, whether even it's. So when does your season? When will your season probably finish? Um, well, hopefully, we've got, hopefully, we've got a semi final after that. Yeah. We've got a, a quarter final on the fourth, so hopefully, we've got a home semi final. Yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be class. Well, we need to the quarter then for sure. <laughs> home semi final is there. We'll do all the plugging. We'll get it pushed. Love that. I'll be there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we spoke too soon. Edit that out. Actually, by the time this airs, will they will have been played? So yeah. if we lose, we can edit out. <laughs> Let me know if it loses. Out. If not, we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, like, you've got a manifest success. Like you do. No, nah, no, we'll win. We'll win. Yeah. Uh, will he be? No, he won't be out. But last night's guest, he has the attitude of gold or bust. So that's what we're having just now. That's the. That's what we're doing. Nothing less than one hundred percent success. Love that. There we go. See, and then. With what you guys do, everybody's a winner anyway. Because, like you said, football, football is a happy byproduct of the situation we've created. Yeah, so for sure, yeah. There you go. Obviously, like this, like, when you lose, you're still devastated at the time. But <laughs> I think, obviously, like when you go back and you're because we've created that core group. When you go back, like you're, you'll probably still end up going out that night with the people you've just lost that game with, and you still have a great night there. Mm-hmm. Like the, the group is still there, no matter the result on the pitch, the environment will remain. Which is great. And I love the mm-hmm. one thing I want to get before we start talking about how we just have a sort of laugh and talk football, which is a great example of what you guys do, is the fact that you guys create situations like this where it is just three mates, three boys that have known each other. Or even a great example like this is like 
me and John were saying before we came on out, I think it's been this much, probably about three and a half years since we've actually spoke to each other due to uni situations, but it is like you still get that connection and like you've found this happy medium that doesn't necessarily have to be football, but in your situation is football that just builds those bridges that people can have that conversation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's the thing. We I think like when when John and Finn had the idea and then attaching it to the mental health side of things, I think it was like sport in general is just the perfect thing to to attach something to this to because it creates the whole the whole team and togetherness in the back of the scenes anyway. So mm-hmm. making that along with with the mental health side of things was just like a perfect match. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's uh, go from there? How? I don't know why I said go from there. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I was so I was so engrossed in your answer and believing with you. I was like, oh, you're the one asking the questions. I'm like, oh. <laughs> John, how how did you think? Like we spoke about the situation with the respect to it deserves to the family that are unfortunate victims of the situation. But why is mental health so important? And it is such a key thing to address, especially in. The times when we knew each other and then throughout life but especially that in that sort of late teen early 20s age range i think you just gotta kind of look at the kind of statistics of males in this country and that's kind of the reason why you you need to address it uh, sooner rather than later really like we we've kind of seen firsthand at what what um can happen if you don't address it so i think us creating this environment has been uh, has been a help to a lot of people and like maybe even ourselves that might not be like suffering from mental health like as badly as you might think it's been like a good platform for people just to be there and like kind of get a bit of support from friends around them who might not see see each other enough like obviously we go to uni and hang about all the time but once you leave uni you might not see these boys at all. So like this this team's been able to kind of be the kind of glue with people getting back together and kind of people that you might not have spoke to beforehand, meeting them and kind of getting back together. So yeah, it's been it's been a great kind of platform just to get people back in kind of contact with each other. Mm-hmm. And then what another thing I like to think uh, talk about and what you spoke about there is I'm a big believer in like there's a, there's a horrible stigma in Britain around drinking culture, which isn't it isn't the best it could be. Like there is unfortunate situations where people can take it too far. But a pub is for me a pub is a real place where I feel like I can sort of open up and chat nonsense. So I think what makes football and the pub, which are two things that have because these things can have horrible connotations next to them. Like you look at the extremes of football and you look at the extremes of binge drinking. Like I just said there, but these places really come to get, and what makes these places so these places in this sport so great for a chance to actually be more open and talk to your friends? I think I don't know. I think it just makes you feel so relaxed at the time. <laughs> you sort of you don't really realize where you are. Like if you're when you're you get lost, sort of in the sense like as I say again, like lost in the moment though. So you just you are more free to say anything, and you're going to speak your mind more. Like, oh, and obviously, like, everyone knows that drinks obviously going to going to make you talk more alone as well. It might not make sense at the time, but it definitely opens you up. Yeah, I think it's just a, a relaxation of um, thinking you're in a safe environment almost. Like, I think sometimes, like, when you're maybe, I don't know, speaking to someone uh, in a different environment, you might not feel, like, as relaxed as you would be if you just sat footballs on and then you're just having a wee natter here and there and then things come up that you might might never have thought of but they're they're kind of just coming up because you're you're there and you you don't really know what you're up to <laughs> I, I love it. i think it's great like i said there i think there was nothing more i look forward to than a wednesday like post sport with the boys and like you said you're just talking nonsense and then especially when you get events where groups and people get to mix that don't normally get there mm-hmm. so you say it might not be like you say it might not be a deep chat about having a proper one-to-one mental health conversation but you just you just get to speak to these people and you that you, you find happiness in the world that you can in these situations so is that something you really try to sort of emphasize on when you get new people into the group do you guys really sort of say like this is a safe space for sure like i i think thing is i don't even think you really need to to say it at this point anymore i think because as soon as we've never had an issue with anyone that's joined yet like as soon as they are there sort of drummed home just how comfortable it is straight away i think just from being around it and hearing what everyone's talking about just helps people feel comfortable as soon as they join yeah like if you look at our our team and then compare it to some of the other teams within the league 
it's it's night and day. Like we we're not we're not one of the the nasty teams that are there to like shout the ref and get on each other's backs. Like I think at the weekend, like someone may have had a go at someone else in the team, and we addressed it straight away and just kind of told them like what why the reasons why we're here and just kind of to kind of quit it really and as as kind of stop. So like we're definitely almost too nice for a football team, but I think that's probably the environment that we wanted to create. <laughs> Yeah, true. I, but I, I think it, on the Saturday, like we all do accept the fact, like everyone, when you're playing competitive sport, you're going to get that edge about you. Mm-hmm. But like, as long as you remember what you're representing whilst you're doing so, then I think there's that happy balance. I love that. That's class. I think I think that's how every like you say you're too nice for a football team. I think that's how every sports team should be. Like, because I think a great. I don't know if you. I was. I'm. I'm a big listener of Five Live in the morning. So I'm just in the car at seven when I'm going to the office, and they had that. They had that report released today, and it was something like nine thousand reps filled it in in the UK. And it was something like eighty nine percent of them have been like verbally abused in like their past three or four games or something. I'm like, that's a wild statistic. And you're like, especially when you get like levels where people are doing it for like twenty quid or thirty quid or something. It is like. I mean, like I, I would be lying if I said you, you're not going to shout a ref at one point in yeah. your life. But it's, it's like you have to let it. You can't let it actually affect people wanting to do the, do that anymore. Like mm-hmm. there's such a shortage of refs in amateur football as well. Um, like I mean, you can see so many games cancelled nowadays because they can't find a referee, and it is probably down to why. Like why would you want to just get screamed at? Like called every name under the sun. Sometimes worse than that for fifty pound for a game on a Saturday. It's not going to be worth their time. Mm-hmm. And in England, I've seen it was in England. It's like it's kids that are getting that are starting off yes. young and they're getting abused by the parents. That's a whole different world. That's that's just terrible. Yeah, it was like it was like the one I heard was like an eighteen year old girl, and she was like, I got shouted out by an under 15s like coach, and it was like a four year old bloke, and I was like, mm-hmm. like that's how madness. You, how, how do you get to coach kids if you're like how yeah. abuse at like an eighteen year old girl? Eh? Like imagine that's if you're on that pitch as well, like you say your dad's a coach and you're standing right. and you're watching your dad scream out like an eighteen year old female referee. Like mm-hmm. you're standing, like what, like what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You'd be so embarrassed. You wouldn't want to show up anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, I think what you do as well is like the, what you do is you you remove the football from the situation. You was like, imagine that situation just took place on the street. Yeah, you exactly. And, and, like, and like you no say, imagine that's your dad. You'd be like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, no, it's crazy. Straight, right? straight to the registry office to change your last name. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't want that to be associated <laughs> with me. Right, so we spoke about we spoke about the cans, and I could honestly talk about the cans all day and night. And I think I probably <laughs> will advertise you guys all day and night because I've got a new Edinburgh team. Paisley's Paisley's there. John, staying loyal to you, but Edinburgh team. I'm now, I'm now here. So, I'm on the cans. That's us. Love that. <laughs> there, well, second coat hook. So when I get that pre order for that shirt, I'm going to get that up there. And They've arrived. Don't worry, we'll get it to you. Mate, sorted. Probably in that case, I might have it up by the time it goes out, but. Yeah, yeah I'm paying yeah. paying full price for it. I'm saying it on camera. I'm paying full price. Not... <laughs> That's not what you were saying to me beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's on camera now, so I'm standing there. There we go. Uh, why is football the greatest sport in the world? I, there's actually there's a huge, there's a YouTube video of watching like, a, and I think that's the actual the the caption of the video and it's just like the celebrations of all those like the last minute winners or like the biggest moments you see and the like, guy don't I've never seen a video describe but like, answer a question as better as that it's huh? it's just I don't know it's just the moments like anything can happen just from mm-hmm. like I'm trying to not watch football when we're doing this because you just can't <laughs> keep you can't keep your eyes off it no matter what it is you can watch any game and it can be that interesting even if like, the standards aren't as high. I mean, we're an amateur team. That game on Saturday was end-to-end. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I thought you were going to say the Road to Manchester or YouTube video, oh, Josh. I, right. <laughs> Ed, I ask again. That video is Road to Manchester, AJ West. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rangers UEFA Cup run, doesn't it? Road to Manchester, yeah. AJ West. Unbelievable. Great video. Best. Best, Me and John used to always watch that after work. After work, I looked for him to come back to my flat for a few drinks. <laughs> we just sit there and watch Road to Manchester. <laughs> Is it? Did it get to the point where it's like right of passage? Like you don't even say any words anyway. You just turn the television. You just know what's going on. Yeah. You, hear the, you hear the background and you know what's coming on. And usually every time we meet up, to be fair. That's <laughs> <what I'm laughs> <doing>. <laughs> I'm glad I missed. When was it? We were in Malone's. Did it go on that night when everybody was like, "Oh, we're going back to the, going back to the boys for a few drinks," and then just I've like, just been Todd in the end. It went as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> me and Todd just sat there speaking with mechanics, basically. Anyway, oh. He just fits on there. Liverpool videos, obviously. He must have watched oh, yeah. that game against Barcelona about four different times. <laughs> and then just puts on a Saint Helens rugby league video whenever he feels like it. <laughs> that yeah. was on at one point. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Todd, if you want to come on and talk about Saint Helens, I'm more than happy to. 
<laughs> Always have a chat. If he shows up that time, though, you never know. He may yeah. have more mm-hmm. Valentine's plans. Uh, it's Valentine's Day. I let people off. I'm I'm not as important as keeping the message sweet. That's that's one thing I know for sure. <laughs> Do you think it is almost as fun being a fan of football as it is playing the sport? Because I'm I'm very much a fan rather than a player, and I think it's great. I think more fun. I never used to. I don't think now, but like. Mm-hmm. Probably I don't really play anymore. Um, but I think <laughs> especially because you stopped because I, I was like I stopped playing football for so long between mm-hmm. school and mechanics really, and then I think a part of the reason then was like you're going to watch the football as well. Like yeah. I I wouldn't I I would give up things like other like pass up going out for other things to just sit and watch football mm-hmm. as normally because it's the team you support. But I'd say like that's the most important thing in my life. Probably I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, I think you feel it more as a fan, like Definitely. and when, like I, as I say, I don't play much anymore. But when I go down to manage mechanics and that, like I, I sometimes don't like watching it because I'm so nervous. Yeah, like, yeah. And like if I was playing the though. game, mm-hmm. yeah, if I was playing the game, I, I would be like, oh, it's, it's like the 90th minute and they've got a corner. I'm not worried about it. But yeah. 90th minute and they've got a corner. Watching it. Like, uh, like I, I through my fingers. <laughs> like, yeah. on, yeah. <laughs> like, it's such a you're so like it's strange. You're not really in it, but it's more yeah. more nerve wracking for you. Like I don't know. It's hard I to explain. The mechanics as well, though. I think obviously, like with us having the the whole from being there from the setup, we have such a different attachment to it as well, though. Mm-hmm. So like, even if you're not playing and you're not on that pitch, like it me, it still means so much to us. Like what's happening now? Like we obviously want to grow in terms of the football as well as the club. Um, and just I guess the pride of seeing us do so well this year now that's taken over and then because we're on such a good run just now like seeing that happen it makes that like what John's talking about on Saturday like the nil nil last minute winner like what a feeling <laughs> honestly great <laughs> feeling that's, it's like, it sounds so weird but that was that's up there with like some of the best <laughs> feelings I've had recently in general <laughs> I love that and I was about I asked on nice my next question was going to be do you find yourself celebrating mechanics goals now more than you do rangers goals and things like that no, no. <laughs> <laughs> still that's live for an ibrox chance different. <laughs> you play penny arcade and he's still there on the table but... I, I don't actually like penny arcade controversial <laughs> we'll cut that bit out for you <laughs> that's fine <laughs> john what yeah, about yourself no. are you are you more invested in the mechanics goals now than the the childhood teams or are you still it's still neck and neck no nah, i'm still neck and neck but i think I think it's different when you're you're at the ground or at the ground yeah. at the at the school pitch. <laughs> but For, like on the, mechanics, the telly, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> on the telly, you're like, oh yes, good goal. But like, yeah. if you're if you're there at the mechanics and the goal goes in, and it, as long as it's an important goal, then yeah, you, it means a lot. Yeah, I think I think Saturday was a big one there because I think that, that's probably our first last minute winner. Mm-hmm. So like we've not really yeah. had that feeling yet, and then and it felt like, a lot yeah, better than you think it was going to feel as well. Forest, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that. We had the, the Yuri Geller videos, so we were playing um, playing mm-hmm. North Berwick, and Yuri Geller's got like a. On I've seen it, really gone on. You have to like Google into it. So um, it's something to do with what is it, Lamb Island? It's just off North Berwick, and right. he's changed their name to North Berwick Lammies. So he's involved. I mean, he does videos before the game. So he's done a video saying he's like using his powers to to get them the win against mental mechanics, and they're going to mentally. I can't remember what word he used. Um, <laughs> and then obviously, so then we've then beat them. They've got TV cameras down there, like a view from the terrace. The podcast there, they were down there yeah. filming. So hopefully, the game oh, will come out. Um, so like after the game, one of our players has gone up to the camera, and starts like pretend to bend a spoon and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so so brave, brave talk from Yuri Geller to side on the stand up. I'm going to go against yeah, the mental yeah. health team. Eh? I know. I don't. I don't think he's looked into it very much. No, <laughs> right. no. he's probably, yeah, he's probably just doing his bit. Um... Yeah, definitely check out the videos. We put um, one up on his. Well, they put uh, one up on their Twitter of, on before the game on Saturday, like him wishing them well. But again, like great publicity for the game and the like, yeah. football in Scotland. So. That's it. You need the, need these guys to sort of come and help. Sure. Yeah, you need you need to put it back down. Like you need not like not the McCoys just as an example, but like these famous figures to then just go and shine the light back down. Like, yeah. yeah, no, definitely. Have you uh, have you got into the shirt and tie managers yet? Like, are you are you still tracksuits <laughs> or are you like have you do you just keep seeing the suit in the corner? Like, I could just could just rock that this Saturday. If we get to a cup final this year, yeah, uh, if we get, <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. And I'll be there. In, I'll chances, be there in <laughs> We're in a quarter, two quarterfinals. Last year we didn't win one cup game. There's about six different cups. Didn't win one cup game. No, and then this year, 
in two quarterfinals. Yeah, we're and still we're, and we're gold or bust. So we're sorted. We're gold or bust. Exactly. Yeah, we're sorted. <laughs> Question of when, not if. That's the mentality we've got to have. <laughs> we're gonna have a bit of fun now because you can't sit and you can't pretend you're some boys having a chat talking about football. And then there's always one guy that just goes in and just goes, "Well, you've you've got to look at the Ronaldo Messi today." So. <laughs> I've got to do this, and it's like it's having an open goal, pardon the pun, and not shooting and talking about it on the podcast. Josh, for you, Ronaldo or Messi? I don't think it was a debate. I think Messi's superior. John? Yeah, uh, when I was younger, I was always a Ronaldo man, but when I think when you look back at it and you see what Messi can do, I think I'm going to have to be a Messi man. <laughs> but would you not say Ronaldo might be the better professional footballer and Messi's just the more naturally talented footballer? But it's still, but still better. I, I think. Oh, yeah. No, I, I like. Again, that's one another compilation. I was just happy sitting there watching YouTube. It was just Lionel Messi moments. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that for Cristiano Ronaldo. No. Do you think any of the the new lot will come close to him? Do you think Mbappe nah. or Haaland will touch it? No. Nah, he's he's generational. Like beyond generational, he'll be the best ever, and I think that will continue for a very very long time. Do you think so? Do not think even Pele or Maradona comes close? Just nothing. I, I think it's hard to say just because of who we've watched more. Um, mm. but Recency think, bias. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like like you'll speak to older people. They'll obviously most people seem to say Maradona when you speak to older people. Um, but then when you look back, like I think I think football is a much more difficult game now than what it was yeah. then. So mm. I think I think the bad is really, really bad then, and the bad is quite good right now. <laughs> Uh, that was going to be my next argument for the, the Haaland and Mbappe thing, because obviously, like you said, obviously you had some defenders they had to play against. Like, I don't necessarily think Van Dijk's better than a John Terry or an Emmanuel Vidic, but I know if Todd Raff was here right now, he'd be screaming through the through the microphone. <laughs> but, uh, you were allowed to do that, John, Todd, you didn't turn up. We get, we get one quick jam. <laughs> uh, do you not think, though, like, as the sport grows, it will be an unfair comparison? Because like you say, like, Maradona had some games against, like, builders on... Yeah. But I think he could still do yeah. it on the Champions League and the Builders. <laughs> yeah. um, so no, I just don't think you'll never see someone do what Messi can do with a football. Mm-hmm. So like no Pelle, can... Sorry. <laughs> like did, did he did he leave South America? He went to America maybe. Mm-hmm. Like Possibly. he didn't he didn't really conquer the world or the best players really. He was he was scoring goals against him, as you say, builders, really. Yeah. Not saying that he was a bad player, but he didn't he didn't really <laughs> didn't really top, level up. Take from John Fraser of Pele as a goal. Not in my top ten anyway. You can't speak ill of him, obviously it's sad that he passed, but the, the guy used to add on a goal, even if he's down the school playground he scored, he'd add that as a goal, wouldn't he? <laughs> hey, everybody pads stats. Like I've done a lot of FIFA with a lot of goals just padding stats. <laughs> <laughs> and, what was I gonna say that? Yeah. Do you guys have a particular, because like, I used to, my favourite thing I used to do when I was skiving in the Kilby with one of my mates on my course was writing down ultimate cult hero 11s so and not necessarily the best oh. player. But like, you know, like <laughs> Gordon Gavs Pedersen for Blackburn is always going to be left mid on my 442 team sheet. Do you guys have like a particular player that just always has an affinity for you? Like, you know he wasn't the best player ever to play football, but you just love watching him every time he played. Adele Tarat. Streets Great won't show. forget. Like he's such a, a vintage show. player. Yeah. That that Twitter page went around for ages. <laughs> yeah. About um, oh, I was just used to scroll through it. Like what a guy yeah. to watch. It's like, it's, like, it's like meet you from Swansea and stuff like that. <laughs> John, what about you? Who's your player? Um, mine would be Lauren Rivera. I don't know if you know. Oh, him. He's, he's yeah. a Newcastle left winger, and he <laughs> scored from forty yards for fun. <laughs> was that game against Liverpool? Was he got a double both of them? Well, Liverpool and Spurs. Spurs. Yeah. He scored like one of the best over over head kicks ever. But yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Newcastle just used to churn out players like that. What's that? Newcastle just used to churn out players like that. You just have like Denver and Papi Cissé just like... Yeah, they've got a full 11 of streets, won't forget. Yeah. Ben Arthur, yeah. There's your man. Exactly. Ben Arthur, that's all against Arsenal. Another one, RIP, man. He was... Do you remember that team where it was just like Kabai, Teote, and Ben Arthur? And everyone was like, they have no reason to be this good. And everybody had them in like the fantasy team because they're just bad. Getting into Europe with Alan Pardew's manager says a lot of <laughs> Ten year contract and <laughs> I was just banter years from then. Mike Ashley was just like, I oh, will just do what we want. We've been yeah. there, like, know the feeling. And you just got like Colicini that has no right to be a top centre back in the league, just <laughs> breaking ankles but somehow getting the ball. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We're nearing the end of the podcast now. I've had a great hour or so talking to Josh and John here. 
now we get to do a bit more of a fun thing. We spoke about the greatness that mental mechanics is doing mental health. Now, a bit more of a laugh, a bit more lighthearted, but this is the section I call under the team bus. Boys, this is where you get a chance to out the boys in the club for having weird habits or just doing things that most people might go, stop doing that, that's a bit strange. <laughs> So, for example, the one that we normally do at the front just to get people warmed up is we'll do this the same as the quick fires, boys, but we'll take it in open at turns. So I'll say who to speak first because I don't want boys just copying each other's answers so they get a cop out because there's some questions where somebody will be like, if I say what he said, then I'm all right. Uh, <laughs> so, for example, we start with like, so most determined, who's just like most wire focused at training and in the games? John, you can go first with that one. Um, I don't know about wired focus, but I go Liam Kelly because he he's a lo- loves a slide tackle and that. <laughs> that's determination now for me. <laughs> Ninety nine aggression on FIFA. Yeah, a hundred, well, hundred. <laughs> One composure. Uh, I'd go Sam Murphy Samba. Uh, like literally training treated exact same standard as a game. Everything's got to be like perfect. But like he's, I've, he'll pick up someone straight away. Like he's constantly talking. So determination wise, <laughs> yeah, I'd go Samba. Is he, is he one of those, just let them know you're there in the first minute? <laughs> For sure, yeah. I mean, the boy just doesn't stop running either. It's just an engine. I love that. The, the N'Golo Kante of mechanics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> much more aggressive than Kante. Like. <laughs> we'll put him in the streets, won't forget. Yeah, I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, biggest practical joker in the squad, Josh. <laughs> Liam Kelly. <laughs> he's going to get, get a lot here, I think. <laughs> yeah, John. that's probably that's probably more fair to <laughs> Take a jump change, you go with him as well, John. Just Liam Kelly as well for practical jobs. Yeah, I'll leave Kelly for me. <laughs> Fair play. Who's the most skillful? Like, who just who just has bought? Like, who just knows how to play ball? Ooh. Most skillful, I'd say, is Freddie, Freddie Duarte. Mm-hmm. Technical wise, like, absolutely brilliant player. Um, I'm going to say Goose. I'm going to be. I was going to say, you said Goose, I was going like, right, to I'll work with it. I'll, I'll see what I'll do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, X Hearts, like whatever is yeah. it? Full team, I don't know, twenty ones, but yeah, team, yeah. <laughs> definitely, yeah, keeping us up there for that one as well. Though, like, going but just give Freddie more credit as well. Like comparing it to an X Hearts player, like it's obviously <laughs> a tough comparison. But it was that game with Wayne Forrest, like Freddie playing against the uh, sentiment for them, who's won Highland League Forest Mechanics. Freddie's mm-hmm. like flicking over his head when he's closing them down. Obviously, the crowd just loving it. So, brilliant That's moment it. from. Oh, it just turned into like prime FIFA Street, like old yeah. 2005. <laughs> can't, can't go wrong. What a, what a game that was. Uh, who's the most clumsy? Like, who's like, you forget, like, no, no, they're coming to the game and forget their boots type thing. <laughs> Liam Kelly. <laughs> this is just the most ben, ben, ben Anderson for me. Yeah. <laughs> There's no one too. Yeah, he's either he's either half an hour late or forty five minutes late. Like there's just no no in between with him. So have you got to the stage yet where you just like tell him like the wrong kickoff time purposely because it's like there's a chance he might be here on time if we tell him an hour earlier. Giving him tough credit, there was actually the first one there on Saturday. Yeah, I'm half an hour early. <laughs> you, you told him the game was Friday. That's what happened. <laughs> nah, I, I don't even know the guy. That's just harsh for me. Apologies. <laughs> uh, who's most up for a night out? Like who's just like right. Tuesday, tired of a driving lesson, boys are on it. To be honest, I don't think any of us are really actually like that that rowdy in that way. Um yeah. like after the game, everyone's sort of in the mood to go out. Mm-hmm. Um well, who's the one that's like we're going we're going to the pub post game for a few beers and who's the one that's like could could out. PDT or could could why not? Probably about ten of us. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll go Chico. Care for the job? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's fun. I don't know. I think Chris Gorry for me is always asking if we're going to the pub, so I'll, I'll say. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking about last weekend or what. <laughs> yeah, good. A good people's man knows how to throw a party. Is Chris Gorry, is Chris Gorry taking the mechanics to next time you're down in Peebles doing a friendly or something? Have to have a night out in the crowd. It's like the tiniest pub in Peebles. It can only hold mm-hmm. about forty people successfully. And every Friday, Saturday, at least three hundred odd folks crammed. <laughs> and it's got a, it's a Celtic. It's technically a Celtic bar. It's owned by a Celtic fan. Ah, I'm out. I'm out. Well, we'll be, you say, we'll that, be you say this: the, the, mo- the most played song is Penny Arcade because people love just love winding them up by putting it on. So, like, to the if crack. you get like a spare quid, just straight in the jukebox, just like Penny <laughs> Arcade, just back to back. <laughs> uh, who's got the best fashion sense? Who turns up in just like snazzy gear? They're all turning up in the mechanics jumpers, so... <laughs> 10 out of 10s across the board, Yeah, right? easy. Um, I'd go James Williamson. Perfect. John? 
Well, I don't, I don't know, no. um, I'll just follow Josh in this one. As I say, no mechanics here, but yeah, James Royce, we can have it. Hey, Liam Kelly's a Liam Kelly's a good shot as well. Liam Kelly's got decent clobber. He needs a good one as well. Like, he's been roasted in the past. True, so yeah. Good yeah. Good <laughs> <laughs> I right. told you. <laughs> right, well, John, you can have the worst answer by going first for this one. Then, who's got the worst fashion sense? Like, who turns up like they're dressed in the dark? Ben. <laughs> ben <laughs> <laughs> I'd agree. Definitely Finn. Poor, poor Finn. It's tough. <laughs> Finn, just like, you know, just check the colours. All you got to do, mate. All you got to do is check the colours. <laughs> who's the most gullible? Like, who's somebody you could tell? Like, I don't know. Just like, he just believes anything. Chico. Really? John? Um, I'll just Todd it. <laughs> Keep giving him a hard time. <laughs> he's not he's not here that's the guy out of jail answer I like it he was that gullible that um, he thought we didn't actually have to show up tonight so. <laughs> <laughs> well when we told him we were like nah it's Valentine's Day you're fine <laughs> like see see the stuff I do for you lads get you out of Valentine's Day so you can watch the football <laughs> while you chat with boys and stuff like <laughs> who is the best dancer who's the one in the in the pub just two-stepping when the jukebox is on Ooh. don't know actually <laughs> The only thing is my instinct is saying Liam Kelly again, just because he's always yeah, doing it. I, horrible, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's good, but he's the one that's always doing it. <laughs> I, hope, I hope by the end of this, Liam Kelly's club captain, because he's my captain regardless of... <laughs> There's actually a, a great story to give a shout out to him here. This is back to the dancing. So he's on a he's on a flight going to... Uh, I think he was going to Prague with his friends from back home. Mm-hmm. He's obviously steaming on the plane and he goes up to a woman just gives her his phone and says, oh, can you just, can you just film this for a second? And he just starts dancing into the camera and gets her to film it. <laughs> just an aisle of the plane. <laughs> she just oh, thought she was going to be part of like a TikTok there. Yeah, that was like... <laughs> right, John, you, you go get, with Liam I Kelly. I think he gets it for that story alone. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like I said, oh, Captain, my Captain, I'll follow him. Like, I'll follow him in the war. <laughs> Who is the worst dancer though, when you've got the best? You've got the Who looks like they're... They may not be in control of their own legs on a football pitch, and they're definitely not in control of their own legs in the dance floor. Don't know. I think Josh can have that one anyway. Me? Yeah, yeah I'm not a move in yet. <laughs> oh, I'll take it, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> it's, like, it's like team manager. You're getting practice in for if you haven't been in the media and the team has a bad game. You're like, it's all on the manager. Exactly, right? yeah. Can't I'll play the players. <laughs> Like who is a future coach? Like who's somebody in there that just like loves ball and you like you see them passing on the knowledge and stuff like that wherever they can. Could probably give it to Goose then again. I think he actually is a, a coach at Hearts currently though, so I guess it doesn't really fit the question. I'll give it to yeah. Martins. Yeah. he's always there. He's he's the one that's want to step up and be there, and I think he might <laughs> might progress yeah. into it, <laughs> going by his injury record as well. So <laughs> yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Go Martin. Fair play, fair play. Uh, who is hard as nails? Like who's like, for example, I think I know your answer based off the most determined answer. But somebody when they're just yeah. like, you always want them to stay behind them if it starts going south. Probably Reedy for me. Reedy. Don't know. Is is he hard, Reedy? Though I don't know. I don't know. He, he goes to the gym enough. <laughs> No, I think yeah, he's quite timid, actually. Oh, I think you're right. he, shred, he shredded, he shredded, but I, he's definitely not a fighter. Anyway. I think he's more of a lover. So, like, just say me, so. hmm? oh, is that John? Just say me, Josh, for me. No, you gave me a shite one. I'm giving you a shite one when it comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have said Dick Lamb. Dick Lamb technically still plays for us as well. Um, uh, but he just, he just done his ACL and his knee. But um, yeah, I, I still probably go him. Even him with a, a ruined ACL would be harder than most of us. Definitely. So I'll go Dick Lamb. John, um, I'll go. I'll go for a pudge. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll imagine the hardest. <laughs> hey, if if he's the hardest, he's the hardest, right? No, he who, is definitely. <laughs> who came back with the worst lockdown lid? Like, who clearly let the misses like try their hand with a, a set of razors or John Fraser? <laughs> <laughs> You come back with a home done fade, did you? And it was just like, just like, right, I know what it's done. Yeah, yeah, done mine, <laughs> he was obviously scared to tell him it was bad because he's so hard. So we just yeah. let him get over yeah. it. <laughs> John didn't even want his hair cut. Pudge was just like, I'll cut your hair. And he was like, oh, all right. <laughs> Whatever the big man says. <laughs> yeah, fair play. And unfortunately, you just get a worse lockdown lid. John, do you have any responses to any lockdown lids or are you just taking that bullet? 
probably Josh's grey grey hairs come through. It's after over, mate. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> That's lockdown stress of no furlough. <laughs> get you George Clooney now. Nah, I think it fell. It's horrible, mate. Me neither. I was working five days a week. Oh, my mates were talking about they had so much free time. I was like, mm. I'm still at work. They were also going out meeting at Meadows with cans and that. Well, obviously, later on in, in lockdown. But, uh, <laughs> when it's socially acceptable. Throwing everyone under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll stick to the question that throw folk under the bus, not getting done with government guidelines. But that's the kind of, the kind of hard-hitting questions we get on the Refuse to Fail podcast. Uh, who is the most natural athlete? Like, who just, like, like you said, with the boy before, could just run for run for days. Yeah, I I would say Reedy's more of a natural athlete probably than Samba. Don't know. Yeah, between them two, anyway, between Reedy and Samba. John. Uh well, I've gave Goose for the most technical or what I just skillful, but I think he's probably the most natural athlete for us. Like he's definitely clearly he no, knows what like he, he just he just glides runner. past people. Yeah. Naturally, like technical, yeah, but like, like runner wise, do you know I think? Natural athlete, you could just put somebody in like any sport and they'd probably be like healthy enough to make a good go of it. Okay, goose then. I'll have to change my answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm misunderstanding these questions. No. It's all, uh, it's all right. It's, it's, it's the best answer we get. It's the honest answer. That's what we want. You're so right, you're, near, you're, you're near the end now. You've just got to... Who's best tunes, John Fraser? Who who has best tunes post-game? Um, I don't know who does play the tunes. Uh... I'm usually shot before then. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chico's in charge of music normally. Resident Cook DJ, you got to let him. Uh, uh, yeah, music. I Better plug him, eh? <laughs> yeah. you got you got to let him cook as well. This is where he gets to try all the new beats in the changing room. Yeah. <laughs> it's like just sampling, just sampling the crowd. That's all he's doing. Right, final. Well, people like John are walking away and leaving. It's obviously not going down too well. <laughs> <laughs> John just sees Chico walk up to the stage. Like, oh, got a shift tonight. Like John, you working Monday, Friday. What's going on? <laughs> Like who last one? Who hogs the mirror the most post game? Who knows that like getting make sure every hair's in line, like the, the pretty boy of the club, if you will. You could probably go yeah. to Chico again as well. Eh? It's quite, oh, quite pristine. Know. It's like there's only three players in this team. <laughs> no, James Williamson again. Actually, no, you can give that James Williamson. James Williamson's a pretty boy. You just got Liam. You just got Liam Kelly like pulling jokes and then punching <laughs> trying to bat <batter> everybody. <laughs> You guys, you guys, and you guys and Todd Raff are just stood in the sideline and just doing what? Yeah, just good talk on, boy. You know what you're doing. Who was that for you, John? Sorry, so did you get an answer in the end? Pretty boy. Um, I don't know. He's pretty. I think yeah, James Williamson has to be the pretty boy. Yeah, <laughs> James, all that means is the boys think you're handsome, so that's a winner in my book. Oh yeah, it's handsome Holland. Yeah, yeah. Handsome Holland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair play, fair play, James. That sounds like a good answer in my book. It's worded like a bad question, but a good answer. <laughs> right, boys, it's been an absolute pleasure. All we need to do to get ourselves out of here now is the one question I gave you a bit of time for. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> three songs. You've just, once we've won gold, we've gone gold or bust in the two finals because we're in two quarter finals. So we're going to go to two finals and we're going to win them both. So you each can do a game. So, Josh, you go first. You have three songs to get the team ready for a night out. What three songs are they and why? Starting off, Elton John, Saturday Night's All Right. That's that's <laughs> becoming our song. Love that, love that. Um, why? Yeah, it's becoming our song. It's because we play Saturdays. So every every Saturday, I post my close friend's Instagram story, uh, <laughs> a clip of that song, and it just gets everyone riled up. Love and it's that. slowly transitioning into our song. Um, sure, believe. Just because you see all the videos of clubs in the dressing room now after they win the cup upset, that's the song they all play now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Womack and Womack teardrops, just because... I like the song, so I want to put it on then. Quite right. you're, in, you're in charge of the tunes, yeah, so exactly. Yeah, my choice. That's a good three as well. Like you've got something for everybody there. Like the boys are going to be riled up, and they know exactly what the situation is at that. Exactly. Well. I would have picked Elton John three times if I could have. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you have a bit more diversity because if I made the playlist at the end of the season, I just have to put Elton John three times. Back back. <laughs> John, what's your three songs? Um, I, I struggled with this. I, I couldn't put three songs down on a piece of paper before, but uh, I've landed on I've landed on a GBX song for to get a party going. So I've went uh, superstar GBX version, nice. um, just party party wise. Um, and I've went for watermelon sugar high, and <laughs> my final song. Want to bring the pace back down a wee bit? Just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my final song because we mentioned dance floor. I went murder on the dance floor. Sophia Alice Baxter, great song. Yeah, Sophia Alice Baxter. Great song, great song. Love that. Right, boys, 
where do my lovely listeners get to follow Mental Mechanics to keep up with the great story as it unfolds? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't even tell you what the handles are off by heart, honestly. <laughs> well, luckily for the listeners, they are all down in the description below and they are right at the top, so we are sorry. We did not have to say that. Boys, thank you so much for coming on. I've loved this. Uh, up the cans. We're going to keep following supporting throughout. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing all I can to help you guys share the great stuff that you're doing. Like I said, always been a pleasure. My listeners are listening in. If you guys know ways you can help the boys with anything or everything they're doing, get in touch. Like we said, the socials are always active. They're always on there. My social always are active, so I can help you bridge the gap if we can. All that's left now, lovely listeners, I need you guys to like, share, subscribe, follow, retweet, tell your mum, tell your dog, tell the guy you saw on the street that you listened to a great podcast last night. We're here just having a laugh, making fun. You guys sharing it allows me to continue to make good get good guests, good podcasts with great <laughs> guests. You also always give me butcher an outro, but we go from there anyway. Thank you guys so much for listening. I will see you again next week for another great episode. Goodbye.